recently just blew all of our collective minds by revealing that Kang the Conqueror would be in the newest Ant-Man film. What? What? How would the most cosmically confusing Marvel villain fit in with the most down-to-earth superhero? Well, the answer is simple. The city of Chronopolis. First things first, let's slow down and start a segment I like to call Marvel History 101. So, Kang the Conqueror is this time-traveling Napoleon-style megalomaniac who, due to time travel hijinks, is actually several different characters in the Marvel Universe. For this video, all you really need to know is that he's got a time-traveling armchair and a major case of wish I could rule all of time and space-itis. He does come pretty close to ruling the Earth a few times, but his real seat of power is a little teeny tiny city called Chronopolis. This city, like Black Panther's Wakanda or the inhuman city Atalan, is one of Marvel's more interesting fictional places. Chronopolis exists in a place called Limbo that exists outside of time. It's also made up of districts from various different times across history. As you can probably figure out by now, the visual possibilities for the MCU Chronopolis are really exciting. Have you ever seen a high-rise pyramid that's located right next to the Parthenon? How about the Empire State Building poking up out of the Great Wall of China? All these nice little touches are 100% something you might get to see when the MCU tackles this city in glorious 3D IMAX. So, the real question we have to ask now is, how will Chronopolis relate to frickin' Ant-Man? Seriously, are they gonna sell the superhero whose biggest problem was a failing security business in the last movie showing up in a high-concept city straight out of Doctor Who? I just need to know where it came from. It's gotta be airtight. I think the person who has the answer to that question is none other than the original Wasp herself, Janet Van Dyne. So, movies have a tendency to do this thing, where they hit the climax and then wrap everything up in like 5 to 10 minutes with lots of hugs and smiles and miniaturized laptop drive-in theaters. It isn't until you start walking back to your car before you realize… Wait a second, where the heck did Janet Van Tine get those clothes? Yeah, that's right. When Hank Pym went into the quantum realm to find his long-lost wife, he was so overjoyed that he didn't even realize that she was wearing tattered robes for some reason. By the way, I love that suit! Now, unless she just so happened to be carrying some Jedi cosplay supplies in her suit… Even just a suit, with no powers. This doesn't make much sense. Nor does the fact that Janet was able to survive for that long without any food or water. Sure, Scott's trip to the Quantum Realm may have pushed him forward in time several years, but Janet had clearly aged. So, what exactly was she doing all that time? And how did she find clothes that looked like they were right out of the Ancient One's closet? Well, that answer becomes pretty obvious when you start to consider that Chronopolis is likely located in the Quantum Realm in the MCU. So it seems quite likely that Janet's past will be the big MacGuffin in the third Ant-Man movie. Did she know Kang? Was she trying to avoid him? Was he trying to get a hold of any Pym particles that she might still have on her so that he could master time travel? Pretty sure that yes is going to be the answer to all of those questions. Team Ant-Man is likely going to have another game of keep away on their hands, but instead of a miniature laboratory, they're going to have Janet to keep away from a time-traveling maniac. Scott, you might want to call some of the other Avengers in on this one. Anyone see an ugly brown van out there? Pretty sure Scott and Hope are going to use some quick thinking and a little bit of teamwork to send old Kang back and back to Chronopolis before the credits roll. That being said, it seems very unlikely that will be the end of Kang's story. There will likely be a post-credits teaser that will hint at more threats to come from the Conqueror in future MCU films. So, Ant-Man 3 will likely start paving the way for Kang's larger role in the MCU as he potentially takes over Thanos' slot as the big bad number one. As cool as that would be to see the Avengers bust up a city that wasn't located on Earth for a change, I'm not sure that they'll be making the trip to Chronopolis. No, I think that might be a good location for Marvel's other big team, the Fantastic Four. While Kang has largely been an Avengers threat over the years, he has tangled with Reed Richards and his family of superheroic misfits over the years. Chronopolis would be the perfect place to stage some high-concept Fantastic Four action sequences. So for my money, look closely at all those inevitable Chronopolis scenes in Ant-Man 3. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a few Easter eggs hinting at the MCU's bright and increasingly weird future. And there you have it, folks, how Kang's City of Chronopolis might fit into Ant-Man 3 and the MCU as a whole. What do you guys think will happen with Kang and his high-concept sci-fi city?